In the last video, we mentioned that the composition of the breast tissue is a major reason why we need a special unit to image the breast tissue. Let's explain that a little bit more. In our video on contrast, we discuss how the composition of structures in an anatomical part determines the radiographic contrast that can be produced. We stated that structures with different densities will naturally produce a high contrast image. On the other hand, structures with similar densities will produce a low contrast image. That is the problem with breast imaging. The breast tissue is composed of structures with extremely similar densities. If we were to use conventional methods, our image would have a really low contrast so low that it wouldn't be diagnostically useful. In this video, we learn how to overcome this challenge. Welcome back to EPS Radiography. I'm Michael. In our video on contrast, we also pointed out that the kilovoltage of an X-ray beam affects the radiographic contrast. A low kilovoltage beam is more differentially attenuated and would produce a high contrast image. This means that, to produce an image of acceptable contrast in mammography, a very low kilovoltage is needed. Conventional radiography equipment produce X-ray beams of between 50 and 120 kilovolts. In mammography, we want the kilovoltage to be as low as 20 kilovolts. Conventional X-ray tubes are not designed to produce X-ray beams with kilovoltage as low as this. Thus, modifications are made to the conventional X-ray tube. These modifications are majorly seen in the anode target, electrode spacing, and filtration of the X-ray tube. Let's start out with the anode target. In mammography tubes, the anode target is commonly made of the element molybdenum. This is unlike in conventional tubes, where anode targets are most commonly made of tungsten. Let us see why. In our video on X-ray production, we learned about brehm lung and characteristic X-ray photons. While brehm lung photons vary in their kilovoltage, characteristic X-ray photons are uniform in kilovoltage and are said to have a narrow spectrum of X-rays. We also learned that with tungsten, at least 70 kilovolts is required to produce characteristic photons. Remember, in mammography, we are always working far below 70 kilovolts. This means that if tungsten targets were used, characteristic X-ray photons would never be produced. Because of this, mammography anode targets are made of molybdenum instead of tungsten. Molybdenum has a lower atomic number than tungsten. Using molybdenum targets, only 20 kilovolts is required to produce characteristic photons. This is good because mammography is done at between 20 and 40 kilovolts. So far, we have discussed how the mammography X-ray tube has an anode target made of molybdenum instead of the good old tungsten. We should also point out that some mammography tubes are made of alloys of molybdenum and rhodium. These anodes allow production of higher photon energies, which is needed to image dense breast tissue. Lastly, we should point out that mammography anode targets also differ from conventional targets in their focal spots. Mammography tubes have a significantly smaller focal spot for increased resolution. They have 0.5 mm focal spots for regular use and an even smaller 0.1 mm focal spot for magnification images. Click here for the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.